Hello my friends, welcome to another exciting episode in our Photoshop design series. In this video, I'll be showing you how I was able to create this flyer inside of Photoshop, right? So if this is something you're interested in, before you go on, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you like this video and make sure you turn on the post notification so you won't miss any videos I'll be dropping like this. If you've not gotten your sci-fi and fantasy pack, it's still very much available. And if you've not gotten your Smart Designer Premium Assets, check the link in the description of this video to get all of these assets and so you can start easy then, right? Without having to say much, let's get started. So the first thing I'd like to do is go to File and click on New, like we've done in previous videos. So I'm just going to click this and I'm just going to make this um, social media flyer like this. And um, of course, my size, I'm going to be using a 5x5 five five inches, resolution 300, color mode, um, RGB, and background transparency, and click OK like this, right? So this is the Photoshop interface. The first thing I want to do is, um, this is um, the foreground and background color. So let me show you the color code. So for the foreground color, this is the color code, right? Click OK. Then. The background color this is the color code so you can use my color code and let's get this thing started so the first thing i like to do is go to adjustment solid color and i'm just going to click on the background color click ok like this okay so easy peasy right and um, now that we have this let's go ahead to the resource file now the fonts that i use inside of this design is inside the smart premium um designer assets so you can use that in case you don't have it i'm just going to bring this inside like this and um, zoom this up like this right so i'm just going to make it this size i think this is nice and um, click enter when you're done so i want it exactly at this size so what i'm going to do next is with the layer selected go to filter and uh, Click on filter. Okay. Okay, so click on filter and uh, click on blow and click on Gaussian blow. And I'm going to make my radius um, this size. Um, I'm working with this radius. I'm not going to blow it out too much. Uh, um, I just want it like this, right? I don't want something like this so i'm just going to leave it at this i don't want the edges to be too sharp based on what we want to use it for so i'm going to make several copies of this ctrl j first the first one i'm going to change this to vivid lights and double click on this gaussian blur which is the effect we added previously i'm just going to increase the blur value so i'm going to be using 66 i think this is fine this is good to go so i'm going to be using um i'm just going to stay around here 61 is fine i'm going to make a copy of this again ctrl j but this time um uh, you can see that we have this light effect going on here but then i'm going to change uh the value for this one i'm going to increase the gaussian blur you can see it makes it more brighter All right so i'm going to click ok like this and um when i'm done with that um yes still on vivid lights okay let me zoom out so when i'm done hold down shift select the three of them and press ctrl g or command g on your keyboard to group all of this and i'm going to name this spotify logo right so that's the first thing you need to do when you're designing see designing as you're building a house so you start from the foundation right so i'm going to um adjustment layer brightness and contrast I'm going to add some brightness to it. You can see it makes a whole lot of difference too. And funny enough, I'm going to reduce the contrast, not increase it, because I want to see that those sharp edges, a little bit of it, not too much. So this is before and this is after, right? Easy peasy. So we're making progress, right? So the next thing I need to do is um, click on this layer. Make sure you're on top of that. Go on and um, go over to where you have your resource file. I have this image here so I can drag and drop like this okay so um, I'm gonna position this here like this I'm gonna make this 
um let's see okay so i'm going to leave it at this size i think this size is good um basically going to leave it here leave it here and um leave it here like this and i'm going to click on solid color i'm using my foreground color still the same color right click and create clipping mask like this i'm going to change this to uh let's see okay i'm going to use linear light for this right so what i'm going to click on this ctrl i to invert this yeah so select the brush you know the drill um i'm only going to paint on areas that i need the lights to be visible at so i'm just going to go on and um painting the light here all right just like this So you want to be gentle and um, delicate so that you can avoid issues um, issues like this. You can see how it went from 1 to 100. So I'm going to control Z this and I'm just going to do it nicely. Right, shift close to the edge and this is what and how you should do this. Okay, so just trying to explore my options. I'm going to still leave it at, um, I don't want this. I'm going to leave it at linear light. Right? So when you have this done, um, a simple trick that you can do to make it more realistic is right click, click on blending option. And um, what you want to do at this point is under here where you have blend if, right? Hold down your alt key. And drag this slider to this part here. You can see how it makes this whole um, lighting process simplified. If you still don't understand this, make sure you watch other videos on how I explain how you can draw highlights on images. So going forward, click um, select another one. Um, adjustment layer, solid color. Do the same thing you did with the first one. Create clipping mask. Um, click on this. Control I to invert it. This time I'm going to use linear dodge art. With my brush selected, I'm just going to paint in some extra lights on the areas that I feel should have extra lights, like areas like this, areas like this should have extra lights, and somewhere maybe somewhere around here. And um, that's all. That's all you need, right? So you can reduce it if you feel it's too much. You can also click on this one and reduce if you feel it's too much. But for me, I'm going to be working with um, 100 here, just like this. Okay, so now that you have this, um, you can select all of this and group it again. And I'm just going to name this image. Make sure you have your layers simplified and everything is looking clean and nice. Right? I'm going to revert this. My foreground, my background is now my foreground color. Selecting my brush, I'm using my brush. I'm just going to paint in this here like this, like this, go up here a little bit. So I'm just creating a half uh, vignette effect. So I'm selecting the image and uh, Spotify and I'm moving them upward so that I have space on the lower part of this design. Right, so this is what I have. You can see that it's beginning to make sense. So let's go on. So the next thing you want to do is create a new layer here. and. Of course, I've inverted my foreground to this color. So I'm going to put in some light here. Right. So I'm just going to use it so it's not too much. Right. So now that you have this, the next thing you want to do is go over to your texts. So basically, you're dragging and dropping here like this. And this is what you have, right? So, and the stress. I really don't know how to pronounce that name. So what you want to do is, I, I took our time to actually type all of this out so that we don't waste our precious time 
trying to arrange basic text. So next thing you want to do is go to color balance and inside here, a few things you want to do. So inside mid tone, I want to drag it towards the green. You can copy my settings. Um, for shadows, I'm going to tilt towards the blue because I need more depth. This is what you do when you want depth in your composition. And for highlights, I want to tilt towards the green also. So this is before and after. You can see that it makes a whole lot of difference. So you can also reduce this if you feel it's too much. I'm just going to leave mine like this. So we don't have, um, we don't go too much on the greens right so guys this is how i was able to create this flyer inside of photoshop if you like this video please do not forget to give it a thumbs up so that youtube can recommend this video to every other person that will need this video don't forget to subscribe i'll see you in the next video just above